Once upon a time in modern Japan, there was an utterly average salaryman named Shingo Ichinomiya. His life was as exciting as watching paint dry, but with longer hours and less color. That is, until one day, he fell asleep and woke up in a world where his biggest concern wasn't a missed deadline, but rather not getting eaten by something with too many teeth. Now, as Wendelin von Benno Baumeister, a five-year-old with a name longer than his attention span, he found himself in a family so large they could start their own soccer team. The eighth son of a poor noble family, he quickly realized that his prospects were about as bright as a dungeon at midnight. But then, plot twist, young Wendelin discovered he had magic powers, which was great news, considering his previous greatest skill was operating a photocopier. His first attempts at magic were akin to a baby's first steps, messy, chaotic, and likely to end in tears. But hey, at least he wasn't stuck in a cubicle. Enter Alfred Rainford, a powerful mage with the patience of a saint, or perhaps just someone who enjoyed watching Wendelin turn things into accidental fireworks. Under Alfred's tutelage, Wendelin's magical abilities went from disaster to slightly less of a disaster. It was a time of growth, discovery, and only a moderate number of things being set on fire. Wendelin's transformation from a corporate drone to a magical prodigy was not smooth. Picture a roller coaster, but with more dragons and fewer safety regulations. His journey was peppered with the kind of challenges that make you go, Wait, did I sign up for this? Spoiler. Spoiler. He didn't, but the universe didn't seem to care. Amidst learning how to not blow himself up, Wendelin had his fair share of, Oh, no, what now? Moments, moments. His life had become an unpredictable mix of magic lessons, noble etiquette, which was as thrilling as watching grass grow, but with fancier clothes and the occasional existential crisis. Just your average Tuesday in the life of a magically teleported salaryman. In the end, Wendelin's life in this new world was about as normal as a cat cafe in space. He went from crunching numbers to conjuring spells from board meetings to battling beasts. It was chaotic, bewildering, and occasionally involved running for his life, but at least it wasn't boring. And in a world where anything could happen, that was probably the best anyone could hope for. In the grand adventure of Wendelin, or as we like to call him, Wenny, the women he meets are as diverse as a box of magical, occasionally explosive chocolates. Let's meet the cast, shall we? Elise. First up, we have Elise Katharina von Hohenheim, a walking, talking embodiment of grace and poise with a touch of Mother Teresa. She's the noblewoman who could probably stop a war with a smile and a well-placed healing spell. Wendelin stumbled upon her, and it was less love at first sights and more awe at first heal. Her role in his life is like that of a Swiss army knife, useful in every situation especially if you need someone to patch you up after you've done something stupid. Ina. Then there's Ina Suzanne von Hohenheim, Elise's cousin, whose personality is as sharp as her archery skills. She's the no-nonsense tell. It, like, it is type who probably has a secret superpower of rolling her eyes so hard they generate wind power. Wendelin found in her a loyal friend who would never let him walk into danger alone. Mostly so she could say, I told you so, afterwards. Louise. Enter Louise Yorande Azelia Vivi von Hohenheim, the fiery redhead with a temper to match. She's as fierce in battle as she is in verbal sparring, making her a double threat. If you're an enemy or an argument, Wendelin's encounters with her are akin to dancing on a volcano. Thrilling, but you might end up in lava if you're not careful. Wilma. Wilma. Last but not least, we have Wilma Etol von Askahan. She's the quiet one, but give her a bow, and she turns into a medieval sniper. Her conversations with Wendelin are a masterclass in saying a lot with a little. She's the type of friend who doesn't say much, but will silently hand you an arrow when you're about to do something monumentally heroic or dumb. Together, these ladies form Wendelin's support group, sounding board, and an occasional rescue team. They're like the Magical Girl Squad, if the Magical Girls were more into fighting monsters and less into sparkly transformations. Each woman brings her own flavor to the story, turning Wendelin's life into a mix of magical battles, emotional support sessions, 
and lessons in how to understand women, 101. He's still working on this one. Their influence on the plot is like adding chili to chocolate. Unexpected but surprisingly good. In conclusion, Wendelin's interactions with these remarkable women are a roller coaster of emotions, magic, and the occasional need for armor, both physical and emotional. They're the heart and soul of his journey, teaching him that in a world filled with dragons, dungeons, and dilemmas, it's the people, or in this case, the women, you meet along the way that truly make the adventure worthwhile. And with this squad by his side, Wendelin's life is anything but dull. The saga of Wendelin and Elise's relationship is like a fairy tale. If the fairy tale involved less singing birds and more life-threatening magic, their first encounter was at the royal palace, where Elise's aura of tranquility hit Wendelin like a soft, very polite brick. It was the classic story of boy meets girl. Boy is overwhelmed by girl's saint-like demeanor. Boy wonders if he's in over his head. As they journeyed together, their relationship evolved like a slow-cooking potion. A dash of respect here, a sprinkle of admiration there, and a whole lot of are we really doing this? Wendelin was drawn to Elise's ability to heal everything from a paper cut to a bruised ego, while Elise found Wendelin's magical mishaps and earnest nature endearing, in a bless his heart kind of way. Key moments in their relationship were often tied to magical misadventures and noble gatherings that made tea parties look like amateur hour. Elise's unwavering support during Wendelin's oops. I did it again magic spells and her calming influence during his why am I here? Noble socializing were crucial. She was like the GPs to his lost tourist. Always guiding, occasionally recalculating. Elise's impact on Wendelin went beyond being a magical medic. She was like his personal life coach. If life coaches wore corsets and could conjure healing spells, her wisdom and kindness helped Wendelin navigate the tricky waters of noble society, where one wrong word could mean social exile or, worse, a duel at dawn. Together, they were a duo that balanced each other out. He brought the chaos. She brought the peace. He had the magical firepower. She had the healing touch. Wendelin learned the importance of empathy and strategic thinking, while Elise got a front row seat to the adventures of Wendelin, the unintentional trouble magnet. Their relationship was a reminder that behind every great magician, there's a great woman, probably stopping him from accidentally turning himself into a frog. It was a partnership built on mutual respect, shared adventures, and the occasional Elise, how do I fix this, moments. In conclusion, Wendelin and Elise's journey together was a blend of magic, mishaps, and meaningful growth. It was like watching a rom-com, but with more spellcasting and less predictable plot twists. As they faced each challenge, they proved that the best relationships are the ones where you can be your true, spell-slinging, occasionally clueless self and still be appreciated. And if that's not relationship goals in a magical world, what is... In the Chronicles of Wendelin, the young magician extraordinaire, self-proclaimed, his relationship with Ina, Elise's cousin, is like a buddy comedy, but with more arrows and fewer car chases. Their first meeting was less meat, cute, and more meat, 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 with Ina's straight shooting, literally and figuratively, personality striking a chord with Wendelin. Over time, their relationship evolved like a well-aged potion. It got better and occasionally caused unexpected side effects. Ina, the pragmatic archer with a no-nonsense attitude, often acted as Wendelin's reality check. Think of her as the GPs when Wendelin's magical escapades went off. Road, which was often. Ina's role in Wendelin's life was like that of a super-efficient personal assistant. If personal assistants were also adept at shooting arrows and saving your hide. She was the voice of reason to his sometimes overly enthusiastic magic casting. The I told you so to his, let's try this and see what happens. Key events in their relationship usually involved Wendelin coming up with a plan that had as much chance of success as a chocolate teapot. And there was Ina, the ever-reliable comrade backing him up while probably mentally drafting um, what went wrong report. Their dynamic was a master class in balancing bravery and common sense. Ina's presence added a grounding element to Wendelin's adventures.
a necessary counterbalance to his often whimsical approach to magic and life. She was the Robin to his Batman, the Watson to his Sherlock, except with more archery and less tweed. Ina's influence on Wendelin was substantial. She taught him the art of not jumping headfirst into trouble, a lesson with varying degrees of success. Her loyalty and straightforwardness were the anchors in the often stormy seas of Wendelin's magical life. She was the steady hand to his magical wand-waving antics. Their relationship, marked by mutual respect and a healthy dose of sarcasm, was a cornerstone in Wendelin's journey. Eno was not just a sidekick. She was a partner in crime, the legal kind mostly. Her pragmatism meshed with his idealism like two puzzle pieces from completely different sets that somehow fit together. In conclusion, Wendelin and Ina's partnership was like watching a magic show where the magician's assistant keeps the show from going off the rails. It was a relationship built on trust, archery, induced rescues, and the unspoken agreement that if one of them did something stupid, the other had full bragging rights. Their story is a testament to the fact that even in a world filled with magic, sometimes the most magical thing is having a friend who can shoot an apple off your head. Not that Wendelin ever tried that for the record. In the grand tapestry of Wendelin's magical misadventures, Louise stands out like a firework in a library. Their first meeting was less of a formal introduction and more of a crash course in how to handle a human tornado. Louise, with her hair as fiery as her temper, made quite the impression it was like watching a knight in shining armor if the knight was also the dragon. As their relationship developed, it was like watching a cat trying to befriend a very enthusiastic dog. Louise, the embodiment of a warrior's spirit with the subtlety of a sledgehammer, brought a whirlwind of energy into Wendelin's life. She was like the sister he never asked for but got anyway, complete with new G's and unsolicited life lessons. Louise's personality was as subtle as her combat style, which is to say, not at all. She was the kind of person who would walk into a room and accidentally knock over a vase, a chair, and possibly a small country. Wendelin, in his usually more reserved manner, often found himself swept up in the chaos that seemed to follow her around like a particularly loyal puppy. Key moments in their relationship often involved situations that could be accurately described as Louise has an idea, and Wendelin wonders how he got involved. Whether it was charging headfirst into battle or arguing over the best way to approach a noble, Louise's approach was always full throttle, leaving Wendelin in the dust, trying to keep up. Louise's influence on Wendelin was akin to a hurricane passing through a quiet village. She shook things up, challenging his perceptions and pushing him out of his comfort zone. She was the one who taught him that sometimes you just have to charge in and ask questions later, preferably very, very quickly. Their dynamic was a mix of bickering, mutual teasing, and the occasional begrudging respect. Louise was the spice to Wendelin's bland soup, the jolt of energy to his carefully laid plans. She was the person who would throw a wrench in the works just to see what would happen, often to Wendelin's dismay. In the end, Louise's impact on Wendelin's life was undeniable. She brought a sense of adventure and a reminder that sometimes the best plan is just to wing it. Her fearless nature and willingness to face any challenge head-on were lessons that Wendelin took to heart, even if he wished they came with a little less shouting. In conclusion, Wendelin's relationship with Louise was like enrolling in a charm school run by a pirate. It was loud, unpredictable, and you never knew what was going to happen next, but it was never, ever boring. Their friendship was a testament to the fact that sometimes the best way to grow is to surround yourself with people who are your complete opposite and then hold on for dear life. In the orchestra of Wendelin's life, Wilma played the role of the mysterious violinist who's quiet until she starts playing. And then, watch out! Their first meeting wasn't with fanfare and fireworks. It was more like a ninja appearing out of the shadows if ninjas carried bows and had impeccable aim. Their relationship developed like a stealth mission, quiet, understated, but with significant impacts. Wendelin, ever the magical enthusiast, was initially puzzled by Wilma's reserved nature. It was like trying to read a book in a dark room. Intriguing, but you're not quite sure what you're looking at. Wilma's role in the story was like that of a secret weapon, unassuming but deadly effective. In the world of loud magicians and even louder nobles, 
She was the calm eye of the storm, the quiet pissed in a noisy room. Her interactions with Wendelin were often a masterclass in minimalism. She could say more with a raised eyebrow than most could with a speech. Key moments in their relationship were defined not by grand gestures or long conversations, but by subtle glances and the occasional I've got your back arrow shot. Whether Wendelin was facing a horde of monsters or a particularly challenging magical conundrum, Wilma was there, steady as a rock, ready with her bow and probably wondering how much quieter life would be without all the magic shenanigans. Wilma's influence on Wendelin was like a gentle nudge rather than a push. She taught him the value of silence, the power of observation, and that sometimes the best action is the one you don't take. It was a lesson in restraint for Wendelin, who was more used to magical explosions than the art of subtlety. Their dynamic was a blend of quiet understanding and mutual respect, a symphony where Wendelin was the brass section and Wilma was the strings. She brought balance to his life, a counterpoint to his sometimes overzealous magic spells. It was a friendship built not on words, but on shared experiences and the unspoken trust that comes from fighting side by side. In conclusion, Wendelin and Wilma's relationship was like a classic comedy duo, if one of them was a mime. Wilma's presence in Wendelin's life was a reminder that sometimes the most powerful voice is the one that doesn't need to be loud to be heard. Her quiet strength and unwavering support were the perfect complements to Wendelin's more flamboyant magical escapades. Together, they proved that in a world full of noise and chaos, there's immense power in being the one who moves silently but carries a big bow. As we close the book on this season of Wendelin's magically chaotic life, it's like looking back at a circus act. There were jugglers, Wendelin juggling his relationships, acrobats, the women in his life doing emotional somersaults, and, of course, the clowns, very antagonist ever. The synthesis of Wendelin's relationships was like a potluck dinner where everyone brings a different dish, and somehow it all works out. There's Elise's healing casserole, Ina's pragmatic pudding, Louise's spicy salsa, and Wilma's silent but deadly souffle. Together, they created a buffet that sustained Wendelin through his trials and tribulations. Wendelin's growth throughout the season was less like a graceful ballet and more like a breakdance battle. He stumbled, spun around, occasionally fell, but always got back up, usually with a little help from his friends. From a bewildered salaryman to a slightly less bewildered magician, his journey was a roller coaster that even he wasn't tall enough to ride. The culmination of the plot was like the season finale of your favorite show. There were twists, turns, and a few I-didn't-see-that-coming moments. Each event, from magical battles to noble shenanigans, shaped Wendelin into a more competent, if not entirely confident, hero. It was a bumpy road, but as they say, what doesn't kill you gives you a lot of unhealthy coping mechanisms and a dark sense of humor. Reflecting on the character's development, it's clear that each person Wendelin met was like a puzzle piece in the jigsaw of his life. Some fit perfectly, some needed a bit of nudging, and some were just there to make the picture more interesting, looking at you, antagonist. Wendelin, our reluctant hero, learned that life is less about finding the perfect spell and more about finding the perfect people to share your misadventures with. Looking to the future, the possibilities are as endless as Wendelin's potential for magical mishaps. Will he continue to grow as a magician? Will his relationships evolve into something even more profound? And most importantly, will he ever learn how to make a decent cup of tea? These are the questions that haunt us as we wait for the next season. In conclusion, Wendelin's journey through magic, mayhem, and a myriad of relationships was like a sitcom. If sitcoms involve dragons and life-threatening situations, it was a story of growth, friendship, and the occasional fireball. As we say goodbye, for now we leave with a sense of satisfaction, a few laughs, and the comforting knowledge that no matter what life throws at Wendelin, he's got a whole team of powerful women ready to throw something back. Here's to more adventures, more magic, and hopefully, Fewer instances of Wendelin accidentally setting things on fire. Cheers!